I hope y'all can see me. <laughs> this lighting is horrible because I don't have no lighting equipment yet. That's next on my um, list of things to get once I get my life together. I hope you can see me. This lighting is just going to have to work. I'm sorry if it sucks. I know. You get over it. You, yeah. I was on Tumblr tumbling and I came across a post that, um, sorry, ADD. <laughs> I came across a post that had identified six different types of love. I found it very interesting. Now, y'all know I am a sucker for love. I study it, I read about it, I write about it, I everything it. Anything that has to do with love, yeah. I wanna, um, share it with you if you don't mind you're gonna find out today what kind of lover you are what kind of lover are you there are six different styles of loving i didn't know this i knew that there were love languages i didn't know about no six styles of love they derive from ancient greek their names are eros ludus storge Pragma, Mania, and Agape. 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 I don't even know how to pronounce the last one. I don't even know how to pronounce most of these, so don't judge me, okay? It's very interesting, though. I'm just gonna share with y'all what I learned. I learned that I am an erotic, agapic lover, but I want to be storgic lover. I long for storgic love, but the lover that I am is an erotic agapic lover. I'm gonna say agapic this whole video, so if that's wrong, y'all just have to deal with it. I wanna just really um, explain to you in depth what kind of lover each lover is and let you know what their views are on marriage and what their views are on sex. Yeah, ready to get started? Let's get started. Erotic lovers choose their lovers very carefully. They choose them by intuition and chemistry. So there has to be some kind of interaction going on between the two. It's a very sensual style of love. Erotic lovers is the most likely of all the love styles to fall in love at first sight or believe in love at first sight. They view marriage as an extended honeymoon and sex to them is kind of seen as like an ultimate aesthetic experience. This particular lover is kind of sometimes seen as being unrealistic when it comes to love or kind of trapped in fantasy. Ludic lovers are the player. Ludic lovers, they kind of more so focus on the quantity than the quality of their relationships. These lovers have more than one lover or partner at one at a time and they focus more on having fun. They choose their partners based on the playing field and they recover very, very quickly from breakups. Ludic lovers tend to, they view marriage as kind of like a trap and they're most likely of all of the love styles to commit infidelity. They regard sex as a conquest or a sport and they engage in relationships if they view it as some kind of challenge. You guys kind of just live free and do what you want. Um, but don't get it twisted because it is a type of love. Um, their love is just a little different. This type of lover can love more than one person at a time and not want to commit to any of them. And their priority could be to still to have fun. Shout out to the Ludic lovers. Logic lovers are friends first. Their love is gradually grown from that of a friendship. If you were to ask them when in the friendship they fell in love, they wouldn't be able to pinpoint it to you because it's just something that naturally happens between these two people. These type of lovers want their significant others to also be their best friend. Stojic lovers place a lot of importance in commitment, respect, and understanding. And they find that their motivation to keep from committing infidelity is to preserve the trust and respect in their relationship. Children and marriage to these lovers are seen as legitimate forms of their bond. And sex isn't of much importance in this love style. Pragmatic lovers, they think very rationally and very realistically about their expectations and their partner. Kind of in comparison as to like having um, a lover's shopping list. They kind of focus on the rewards and costs of being in a relationship with someone so they kind of 
weigh, how do you say? They kind, they weigh the value in having someone as a partner, if that makes any sense. They choose their partner based on what kind of goals they can reach together. These type of lovers avoid infidelity so they don't have to deal with adverse consequences of their actions. With the pragmatic lovers, it's all about consequence, reward, values, costs. They kind of focus on what's to be gained and what's to be lost. They either view sex as a reward or just a means of procreation. Uh, it's just a way to make babies. They view marriage and children as potential liabilities and assets. Disadvantage of pragmatic love is the undemonstrativeness and lack of emotion. It's kind of an emotionalist love. This is business, baby. What I've read, it has to do a lot with like arranged marriages. You know how people, like back in the day, they still do it now. Do they still do it now, arranged marriages? I don't know, let me know if they do in the comments below. Um, in arranged marriages, that's what that's what they're doing. They're weighing the cost and the value of the relationship. And it's like, um, when you think pragmatic love or when you hear pragmatic love, it's kind of, you know, directed towards something that's arranged like you don't really get to choose your love it's like okay you're gonna be in this and this because this is gonna best benefit you financially whatever then you have your manic lover the manic lover for the most part kind of has low self-esteem they need their partners love for them is a means of rescue or the reinforcement of value they avoid committing infidelity if they feel like there is any type of way that they'll get found out or discovered. Manic lovers view marriage as ownership. You marry me, I own you. That's their thought process. Um, and they view children as either competition for their partner's love or a replacement for their partner's love, which is crazy to me. That's mad crazy i guess that's why they call it manic love right sex to them is a reassurance of love you have sex with them and that's to them that's you telling them that you love them manic lovers are often very anxious very insecure and can be extremely extremely jealous this type of lover can also be very very obsessive and extremely codependent agapic <laughs> type love you have the agapic lover and these lovers are self-sacrificing, all-encompassing type lovers. These lovers are often um, spiritual or religious people. They remain very, very faithful to their partners. And these are the type of lovers who kind of wait for their lovers after a breakup. They're not the ones that get over a breakup very easily. Marriage and children to them are seen as sacred trusts and sex to them is like a gift between two people. Um, agapic love believes itself to be very, very unconditional. They kind of suffer focusing more on their partner's needs and not their own. An agapic lover who makes a promise or gives you their word will endure suffering to keep their word. Like, they will suffer for you. These type of lovers are very, very sacrificial, very generous. They'll give you their everything. They'll risk everything. They'll suffer for you. They'll... <sighs> this is so poetic. Um, that's all the loves in the love shell. In a, in a love shell. <laughs> yeah, that's all the loves in the love Which ones are you? Um, I'm gonna list all of the loves in the description box below in the link or where I read everything and kind of just studied everything. I'm not even really done completely studying. I want to just go more in depth on all the different types of love. I find it super, super, super interesting. Yeah, I love you. And I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye.